Soldier, keep on marching on. Head down till the work is done. Waiting on that morning sun. Soldier, keep on marching on. Welcome around the virtual campfire for Frithcast, episode 58. 58! 58. 58! Grab a drink, settle in, warm your knees, come on in around the virtual campfire, all squidge in, hello lovely new listeners, hello lovely experienced listeners, it's lovely to have you back again. Hello our cat! Hello, our cat. Just in case. joining us for this recording, in case you hear squeaky noises, it's not my knees, it's the cat. It's the cat. She she sort of, she's like a, she's getting on a bit, bless her. She is. She's a bit creaky now. And she doesn't purr anymore. She sort of does this little squeaky noise. She does. So if you hear the little squeaky noise, it's her. Yeah. If you're fairly new to Frithcast. Hello, in that case. Hello. Welcome. I'm Suzanne Martin. I'm a UK ambassador for an organisation called Tech, which is the Asatru community. And I'm uh, I'm Kate, and I'm not an ambassador for anything. Uh, I just happen to live here. And run on coffee. And I run on coffee. Coffee Power Druid! And yeah, I've left it over there, and I can't reach it because I've hang got on. a cat on my knee. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I'll just do the reaching of the coffee thing. Around the virtual campfire, there's a cat on my knee. There is. There we go, that's lovely. All right, got coffee? I've got coffee now. All right, ready to go then? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. So, for this episode... I'll try not to make too much noise while I'm drinking. That's a good plan. For this episode, a long, long time ago, episode like... In a galaxy far, far away. You've been saving that one, haven't you? It's not a matter of saving it, it's just mandatory. Somebody says a long time ago... You have to say, in a galaxy far, far away, it's the rules. Oh, that's probably too much. Yeah, but it was good. Oh, some poor folks have got to listen to this. Yeah, they have. Oh. I mean, you haven't got to. It's not the rules. No, I know. It's not like a mandatory thing, but, you know, it's kind of nice. We like it when you do. People around the virtual campfire. Way back in somewhere in the late 20s of episodes, I think it's like 28, mm-hmm. we did an episode about the first rune in the sequence. There she is. Hi. That being the cow rune. It's the cow rune. Called... Fuff. No. Try again. It's not called Fuff and the second one's called Fluffy. It's not called, called Fluffy. The, no. Fluffy. Called, Fluffy, no. Fluffy the Rune. It's not called <laughs> Fluffy the Rune. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not. It's not called Fluffy the Rune. Hang on. Hang on. I'll ask the cat. The cat will know. Yeah. What's that rune called? Dude. Fail. Fail. You see, I told you she'd know. Fail. So, having done one rune out of the sequence of many Mm -hmm. I thought what we might spend this episode doing is looking at another one rune okay and one which is do you mind (laughs) are we doing we're doing ooth ooth are we no no I thought we'd pick another one out of the sequence okay and we'd look at the T rune T Tewaz 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 and it's the one that looks like an arrow. I have seen it. I I, I always thought, actually, uh, that it looked like the letter T, only kind of... Bendy. 
sagging a bit. Yeah. Sort of, yeah. So, yeah, but arrow, yes, it does yeah. look like an arrow as well. Like an arrow. Yes, obviously. Uh, so, like a directional arrow. Yeah. Yeah. So, I thought we'd have a bit of a wander around that rune this evening. Okay. Follow, around, the, follow the directional arrow. Follow the directional arrow. Around the virtual campfire, I thought we'd have a little bit of a natter about that rune and see where it took us. Okay. Okay. So, this rune is... I know you want to join in, sweetie. I think it's because I, I tweaked her ear. Yeah. I think that probably The ear was. tweaking oh, button that. still works. Hang on. Carry on. Okay. <laughs> Cat works. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought we'd have a chat about that rune. Mm -hmm. See where it takes us a little bit. Now you might have gathered there are a few runes between that first one we did and this one. We have kind of hopped over one or two. We might have hopped over one or two, but like our story times... We're not doing these in sequence. Okay. They're just going to be, uh, unlike the story times, which are every nine episodes, I thought we'd just have a look at another rune because we haven't looked at a single rune for a very long time. Well, if the last one we did was 28. Yeah. And this episode is 58. Yeah. Then there's that many episodes in between. We'd look at the Tiwas rune. Okay. Now, I know... I, we can't tell you how to hear them. I've so heard this. This, I, I, there was a... this episode comes with a disclaimer that if you know this rune as something else or you get other associations with it, that's all good and groovy. Okay. This is not the definitive lot. We're not sort of standing here saying, right, this is the way this rune should be looked at and no other will do. Yeah, no. Will do. There's, there's dozens of ways you can look at all of the runes it okay. depends on what's next to them it depends what you're using them for it depends on where they're going right they all the nuances happen but for basic base meanings so that's where i'd like to start so we're talking specific we're talking initially about divinatory meanings yes. of this room i'm going to start with the oracular okay and I know it's your thing, so... It, it is kind of one of my big things, and I quite like doing it. I'm going to try not to spend all our time doing that, but I'm then going to move into some self-reflective work that you can do with this rune. OK. For me, runes are something that you can use for self-reflection, for self-improvement, for understanding how you think. OK. And why you think in certain ways and in certain areas. Do we just want to go quick over where this rune originates from what its immediate associations are. I mean, as a, as a, as a letter, as a glyph, rather than yeah. so, necessarily as, a, as, a, as an oracular symbol. Yeah, if you're looking at it as a letter in the Futhark, which is the alphabet, you'll find it in the Elder Futhark, mm -hmm. and you'll find it representing the, the phonetic sound T. Okay. Now, it's different from the Th sound, because we've got another rune that covers the Th. I know this one. This is Thorn. This is Thorn. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a whole lot earlier in the sequence. Mm -hmm. This rune is like a t sound on its own. Okay. So it's just t rather than th. And this rune for me, there are verses in the rune poems. Mm -hmm. So we'll throw the links into the description. For me, this has connotations with the warrior. Okay. The sword. And if I'm remembering rightly, which may or may not be a thing because it has been a very long day and I haven't drunk quite as much coffee as I would have liked, <laughs> that there are swords, Viking swords, that have been found with the T rune scratched into them or engraved into them. I do know you've told me that Just before. Just a single rune. You've said you've definitely said that before. It was, so but it was a kind of a because it was associated with Tia. Am I right? Tyr, yeah. Uh, so, who is the? The 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 warrior the justice yeah the sort of guardian kind of kind yes. of deal yes yeah he's not Forseti the judge okay Tia for me Lord of Swords Lord of uh, justice but also Lord of sacrifice okay so he knows the value of a sacrifice and knows its full weight before he gives it and still gives it. This is because of his role in Ragnarok. In the binding of Fenrir the Wolf. That's yeah. not Ragnarok. So he gives his sword hand, which for a warrior is pretty much everything. It's your livelihood. It's the way you gain status and money and wealth. And he gives that up. And he willingly gives it. 
knowing what the cost is going to be for that sacrifice, knowing what it's going to mean for him personally, he does that for the benefit of the larger community that he's trying to help. Yeah. So for me, this rune has connotations with sacrifice. Okay. It has connotations with a sword, the, the symbol of a warrior. Mm. If you're looking at Viking weaponry, you've got things like spears, yeah. useful for um, spearing larger animals, useful for hunting, yeah. fairly big animals, because you don't want to be catching no rabbits with a spear. You'll end up with two ears and a tail, and you won't end up with an awful lot left in the middle. Could be a big rabbit. Really big, pointy, pointy teeth. Yeah. Yeah. Like that dude out of the Monty Python film. No, 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 no. In the cave. <laughs> yeah, that. So if you look at uh, an axe, thank you. If you look at an axe, a hand axe, you can use it for chopping wood. You can use it for carving. Yeah. You can use it for other tasks as well as killing people. Indeed. Granted, you get things like Dane axes, which are the larger warfare style ones less likely to be used for chopping wood beardy axes beardy axes are more likely to be used for chopping people yeah you get a sword the only thing a sword can be used for is killing somebody else yeah it cannot be used i mean as a um a tool to help create a homestead to help <laughs> I feel like I'm being upstaged by a I three think, kilogram cat have here. Have you got a sword? Yeah. <laughs> the only thing a sword can be used for is that. That, to me, is what this rune embodies. Mm, mm. That singular, focused spirit that uh, there is also an association with the North Star. Okay. The Guiding Star. Shut up! Fuzzbucket. Come here! <clears throat> Don't dramatise. You know you can get up here if you put your mind to it. Come on. There we go. Now sit down and shut up. <laughs> it's not going to work. Carry on. OK. There's also an association with the North Star. OK. So for me, this rune embodies not only the guiding point, the goal that you are aiming for as an individual human being. Whatever that goal happens to be, however distant it is, it's a guide marker. Okay. It shows you where to go when things might be getting a bit cloudy or a bit um, confused or a bit intense or a bit, you know, you're getting a lot of deadlines in a very short time and you're thinking, my God, how do I cope with this? That guiding point is there to show you this is what you're aiming for. So this is the room appearing in an arrow shape. Yeah, this is your refocus. Okay. This is get a bit of perspective. Just take a step out take a look at where you're aiming for mm. remind yourself of why you're doing what you're doing okay and for me the tear rune also possesses the ability to cut away the parts of your life to make space for that new goal make space for that new place okay if you are going to aim for something and it's, you know, a fairly big, momentous something, then you are going to need to make room in your life to aim for it yeah. and to take steps towards it. Yeah, you can't do everything. You cannot, all at the same time, ain't going to work. Mm. So you've got to make space in your life to do things. And it's your decision on then, right, what things do I give up? What things do I sacrifice towards this greater goal? Okay. Like Tia. Yeah. Only... Please, not your hands. No, that's not a good idea. Please don't do that. If you can avoid it. Yeah. Be great. Thanks. Just, you know, just a sort of health and safety lifestyle tip yeah. from your friendly fifth, friendly fifth cast team. Yeah. <clears throat> don't be... Yeah, no. Bad don't, idea. Don't stick your hands in, in, in anything... Anything slavering more, basically. Yeah. Don't do it. No. Bad idea. But yeah, this is kind of like... This rune to me, if I pull this as a singular rune and I look at it, you know, right face up, I'm looking at what are my goals? Mm. What are the big things that I want to achieve? Looking at what are the steps I need to achieve that with? Okay. What are the sacrifices that I'm willing to make? Even, you know, what are the things that I'm maybe not quite willing to make because I really don't want to have to give that up? Yeah. It's not, for me, it's not a sacrifice unless it makes you pause for thought. 
Well, I think that's I think that's fairly uni- I think that's fairly universal in that the idea of a sacrifice is that it has got it's got to bite it's yeah. got to hurt you it's got to have it's some got to be a hardship of, yeah for me it's yes some things you might be able to give up but to do something new to do something big goal shaped mm. it's got to be a sacrifice of either time or finances or yeah. resources there there has to be some kind of payment yeah that you have to give to achieve that thing or to have a chance of achieving it. See, just as an aside, this is why, despite, you know, hundreds of years of uh, Roman tradition, even while it was extant, I've never seen the worth in blood sacrifice. No. You know, because it's like I'm not giving up anything. I'm making something else give up. Yes. For my sacrifice. And the only thing I've given up is the money it's taken me to buy that animal. Yeah. It's like I might as well just sacrifice the money, just throw it in the lake or something. Exactly. So, yeah, for me, this rune has a lot of, you know, it has connotations of what is sacrifice. Mm. What are you willing to give up to reach your goal? What are you not willing to give up to reach your goal? Yeah. And over all of that, this goal is kind of sat there with this guiding light showing you this is what you want to achieve. This is where you want to go. And this is what you need to do to... To do it. To get to it. So yeah. you can you can take that sword and you can use it to to cut your quest into little bits. Yes. And sort of say, well, I need to I need to in order to do this, I need to first prepare the way by doing this and this. Yeah. And then in order to do one of those things I've got to do this, this, this and this. Yeah. Uh and you end up with it, you know, creating that kind of Yeah. Sense of direction. And now all I've got in my head is Text adventure games from yes years ago on the computer where you you're had gonna to put tea and no tea in your backpack. Yeah, you're going to take the paper horn and glue it to the horse. That's right. In in order to get the tuning fork, yes, which you can then use to <laughs> to get the rubber chicken with the pulley in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And now anybody who's ever played Secret of Monkey Island is going, Rubber Chicken with a pulley in the middle! God damn it! I carried that around for days! Days and days! I could work out what the hell that was for. I've never been very good at adventure games. Sorry! (laughs) I'm sorry, I just suddenly got this image in my head. So yeah... (laughs) Guy Brush Threepwood. Yes. Sorry, do go on. Um, I, I'm Hello. not sure I can, really. It's just you <laughs> successfully, epically derailed my brain. Hello, pleased to meet you. You're welcome. <laughs> Have a gorilla. <laughs> Have one of my monkeys, they're milder. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dearie me. So for me, there's an element of that in this room. Maybe not the rubber chicken with the pulley in the middle. Okay. Maybe that's that's just a little bit of a step too far for well, this particular know, rune. Know. But this rune also it's for past, me, it's past the watershed. We're it fine. It is way past the watershed where we are right now. We are we are so past it. We haven't even oh, got it in the rearview mirror. I was past it years ago. I know. <sighs> I didn't like to say. I, it's it's a it's a constant companion. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving on. But for me. This rune also has uh, uh, things that you can do self-reflectively. Okay. You can take it and reflect on it and think, what are the things, what are the things that no longer benefit in me in my life that I can cut away, symbolically cut away? Yeah. And look at taking them out to give these new things, these new goals that I want, time and space to grow. Mm. I've got to cut things back of the old growth and get myself a new direction to go in. Okay. So, yeah, it's a little bit like um, you're looking at yourself and going, right, what does this, how does this relationship help me? Does it benefit me? Is it not a good relationship? Is it not a healthy relationship? Is this situation one that I can improve? Is it one that I can cut away and choose something better yeah so it's kind of like looking at your own behaviors your own emotions your own feelings 
and looking at them and thinking, are these ones that benefit me are these ones that I want to have can I change them can I alter them can I choose not to do them so it's kind of it's kind of I mean I'm thinking CBT yeah that kind of thing yeah, yeah. Your, your cognitive behavioral therapy is a little the, bit of that the, yeah the, but the the, the the overriding sense I've got at the moment is a kind of Marie Kondo for your brain <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> all right it's like you know does this does this does this spark joy? Yes. This is the thing that we have to say these days. It's, this it's room, all the rage. Does this room spark joy? Does this room, indeed. No, because the joy room was way back at the beginning <laughs> of the sequence, and this is... Wait, there's a joy down. room? There is a joy room. What's the joy room? It's the one that looks like a capital P with edges. Capital P with edges? Yeah, it's kind of like a straight down stick. Yeah, it is exactly like that. She's being joyous. She is very joyous. I'm seeing the... Joy. You can see it sparking. She's see. sparking. She's not sparking. Although, if you get a balloon... <laughs> Do not get a balloon and put it near our cat. Okay? That can make a spark. Do not make the cat spark. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not a good idea. I wouldn't dream of it. She's 476 years old. I've got to give her some dignity. You have. Yeah. At least try little bottle by the, jaw, by the door. Indeed. You know. Should we go back to Marie Condoing our brains? Let's do that. So I've used this rune looking at that rune for myself and looking at the runes around it and using the situation that the runes around it are pointing me towards and looking at that rune and saying, right, what are the things that I can look at in the situation that's being shown to me? Yeah. Are the things that I can choose not to do anymore uh -huh. that I feel are not healthy for me that I feel don't help support me or help build my confidence are the things that I can take out yeah. and give a space for new things to grow in yeah in my week in my day in my life prune your week I can prune my week yeah. it's like dreaming your weird only different dream weird <laughs> who'd you wished had you wished <laughs> so yeah it's kind of an odd one this one because a lot of it is self-reflective work mm -hmm. and a lot of it is some of it you can use it oracular yeah and the connotations you can you can have with the warrior with sacrifice if you're thinking you know you want to look at more of the warrior aspects then what does a warrior mean to, what does being a warrior now mean to you Oh, well, that's a big question. It is a big question. It's probably going to take more than one episode. So, lovely listeners, we're going to leave you with that one. Yeah. Pondering it. What does being... If you think, actually, I want that warrior mentality... Might be something to come back to, though. Yeah. It's kind of a biggie. Because I'm... I mean, what I... What does a warrior in the modern day mean to you now? What values do you take from the, the values that they held as mm. high values? Can you transpose those directly across to the lifestyles that we have now? Into the, the, into the world we we're living now. in at the moment, yeah. Where, you know, f fortunately for the most part, it's not... Uh, we're not all sort of confronted with that in the way you might have been back in... No, and our, you know. the ways that we acquire wealth now are generally through things like employment. Or it, society at large generally holds to things like employment, whereas mm -hmm. in the Viking Age... Fraud. Yes, in the Viking Age, it <laughs> was things like trading, but it was trading on a barter system or trading by weight. Yep. Uh, you also had the hack raiding, silver. Hack silver. Yes, you also had the the raiding aspects. Mm -hmm. You had warriors who were literally professional warriors yeah. who would be that would be their entire livelihood. What happens when they get too old to do that? Is that a dishonourable thing getting to. I was going to say, to cause, I mean, the, the idea is basically not to, isn't it? It's... It is. There are old warriors and there are bold warriors. But there are no old, bold warriors. There are not. Mm. So, for me, the tear was rune. The tear rune, what does it mean to be a warrior? Mm. What does it mean to give sacrifice? What things have you had to give up? Yeah. What things have you not wanted to give up but have done anyway? Yeah. What things have you willingly given up mm. to give yourself space in your week or your life to do other things? Okay. 
the example that comes to my mind is things like going to university. Mm. If you are offered a place at university, you give up. You might give up where you live and move somewhere else. You certainly might have a completely different schedule being a, a student at university and reading a subject or learning a subject. Yeah. You might have to find a part-time job that fits in between to give yourself enough money to live off. Mm. So what are the things that you give up in that period of study in your life, however many years that ends up being? Yeah. You're looking at altering your life quite drastically to get that study in and to aim for that goal of ultimately getting that qualification yeah lovely listeners i think our little cat is telling us she wants something which probably means we're going to have to go and attend attention to is what she wants attention is what she wants she usually gets it yeah yeah lovely listeners but, but... we're going to leave you pondering these really big questions around the virtual campfire stay as long as you like the virtual campfire is virtual it moves it, <laughs> it can be wherever you are it's all good if you would like to find us online, then I'm Suzanne Martin. I'm a UK ambassador for TAC. I'm on Facebook as Suzanne Martin, and I'm also on Twitter at Geetha in Jeans. And if you should want to find me for any reason, uh, I am on Facebook and Twitter as Kate Coldwind. And you can find my uh, sorry excuse for a blog at glassrain.net. Uh, and uh, one day I might update it. Okay. Yay. And with that, lovely listeners, we will leave you pondering around the virtual campfire and we will talk to you all next time. Ideally, we'll have locked the cat out of the room. Yeah. We'll she gets upset time. if we lock her out of the room, that's all. <laughs> she does. Yes, and we do. We don't, she's 476 years <laughs> old. We don't like to upset her if we can avoid it. No. Uh, anyway, I jumped on at three a.m. because she can sleep the afternoon and I can't. Yeah, I have to go to work. Bless her. Yeah, bless her. Mm -hmm. Through gritted teeth. Absolutely. All right, lovely listeners. We will talk to you all next time. If you would like to drop us a friend request, drop us a comment, come and say hi. You are very, very welcome to do so. Exceedingly welcome. And we crazily will, welcome. We will talk to you all soon. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>